What's your opinion of Mick Malloy? I think he's very nice. <laughs> very attractive. Oh, he's good. I like him very good. I enjoy it very much. I like him very much. Get your backside couch side next. For your very special winter viewing. Channel 9 wish you to be advised that this program, The Mick Malloy Show, is 30 minutes of Mick Malloy playing Mick Malloy from The Mick Malloy Show in his most provocative and outrageous performance yet seen on television. Mick Malloy holds nothing sacred. If you don't appreciate this form of comedy, we suggest with respect that you and your family should not watch it. That a perfect 10. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Well thank you. Done. Uh, thanks for joining us once again for the Mick Malloy Show. Uh, before we get into it, just a quick hello to who's on the couches. That looks like Tony Martin. Yes. How are you, Tony? Couldn't be thinner. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be thinner. We've got Hesse, of course. How are you, Hesse? And joining us for the first time over there, it's Dave O'Neill. Welcome, Dave O'Neill. Hey. Oh, it's, uh... I'm just going to... Show us again. It's, it's kind of like before and after, yeah, isn't yeah. it, really? <laughs> We're often mistaken for each other. <laughs> and unless I'm a fool, wasn't the orange couch here last week and the blue one there? What's going oh. on? It's witchcraft, I tell oh. you! It's witchcraft! <laughs> hey, fellas, before we get into it, do you mind if I just go have a sneak out the window? Here you go. What's See what's on? going on on the you mean streets. Yeah. This won't take a second. How are you, Kev? How are you, yeah, Barry? Looking, baby. looking good. Yeah, looking good. I'm turning into a bit of a nosy parker, aren't I? <laughs> To see what's going on out there today. Hmm. What the? Oh, it's the. <laughs> <laughs> I could be mistaken, but I think that's the Australian Davis Cup tennis team still celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> guys. They go off like firecrackers, those boys, don't they? Yeah, have we got the actual footage? Did we all see that during yeah, the week of, of the tennis team it. going off? Have a look. Oh, cool. This is after their semi-final win against oh. America. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh, that's a pretty good look, isn't it? Now, that, that Michael, that's a journey into hell. <laughs> that's a journey into in hell. In the nuke's belly. You know what I reckon they should do? Because that was the semi-final win. Yeah. In the final against Russia, I reckon they should paint themselves green. So if they win, they look like the Hulk! <laughs> it's just a thought. How's that? How's that if that catches on? What a way to celebrate a bit of good news. Imagine if, say, everyone started doing that. Number 65, number 65. Your veal parmesan is ready. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Two fat ladies. 88. That's it! Bingo! <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi there. We're from the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. We'd want to talk with you about Jesus the Lord. Sure, come in. Really? Oh, right. <laughs> well, gentlemen, looks like we've got ourselves a deal. That's a great look, isn't it? That's a I reckon. No, don't. It no. sounds forced. <laughs> it's like we're prodding you with electric probes. 
I reckon we'll get one of those out of Pendo before the night, Sam. That's <laughs> right, Tippy's over there. I want one Pendo before you get out of here. Hey, uh, as I flagged, we're actually in the Davis Cup, we're playing Russia in the final. Right. And I've actually got some footage here of the Russian Davis Cup tennis team practicing. Have a look. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look at that! Hello! <laughs> I think we might win that one. <laughs> it's just a thought. How's that guy playing tennis? You wouldn't need ball boys so much as glassies. <laughs> Let's bring on the drinks trolley. Bring on the drinks trolley. At the end of every game, enough of that. Let's get into the big news of the week. And yep. it doesn't get any bigger than this. It's the JFK story. Yes. We won't linger on this because it's not to everyone's taste. But I've got to point out how sensitively and intelligently our press handled it. Have a look at this cover. Cursed! <laughs> Cursed! Why didn't they just run with Oogada Boogada? Oogada Boogada! Big plane, he'd come fall down. Oogada Boogada! Oogada Boogada! It's, and the, it's great when superstitions make it onto the front page of the papers. That's my favourite superstition. Horseless <laughs> carriage sighted in downtown Melbourne. Haunted house! But the, hey, the guys had like a burial at sea twice now. <laughs> that yeah. is uncalled for. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going sorry. out of order. I'm going to phone John Law. Could you? Could you? Right now. He's coming up. You know, the other thing about that story was the was the, the media coverage in America, which was just sensational because they were all camped down at Hyannisport where the Kennedy compound is, and they actually were lined up against the back fence of, of their house, and it's just wall-to-wall -wall media. And I actually saw one guy in the middle of his report stop, look over the fence and go, could you keep your grieving down? I'm on air out here! <laughs> You know what I mean? Of course, you're actually assuming that he was on that plane. Oh, here's our first conspiracy uh, theory! It's already, it's already starting. Uh, There's already talk on the internet that, you know, well, we didn't see him brought ashore, they've put him back down. I'll be oh. waiting until Oliver Stone's JFK Jr. comes out. <laughs> 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 That's the latest. That'll be a good one. Yeah. Hey, let's go from that. The other controversy of the week, of course, is Lawsy. Oh, oh Lawsy in the Lawsy. banks. It's still raging. Yeah. And in fact, earlier this week on TUE, <laughs> on uh, John Law's program, he actually, uh, well, he delivered a very moving soliloquy where he terminated his agreement with the banks. And I'd like to play you edited excerpts from that soliloquy now. Have a listen. Today I'm going to ask the banks to end our agreement and to cancel the whole story. Now, rightly or wrongly, to continue now with the segment is simply to leave us all open to more of this brutal, hurtful, wounding gutter campaign of muck <laughs> and innuendo. Maybe with that wonderful thing of 2020 hindsight, it did uh, look, at least to malicious people, as if I had somehow sold out, changed my mind. But incidentally, what is wrong with changing your mind when you have more information? Either way, I couldn't have imagined, not in a million years, how this uh, would be used by small, spiteful people in an attempt to bring me down. But what the hell is motivating them? I don't know. I mean, jealousy? Envy? Ambition, maybe a desperate desire to make something of their lives by crawling out of their gutter to get me? There was no way I was going to let the evil people win. I guess I really can't put it in words any better than that. I've got no mates who probably can, and uh, maybe I ought to let my little brother, the emu, say it for me. you people. <laughs> that wasn't the song. That... Did you hear what he actually I... played? Please tell, team. He played True Blue. <laughs> the song True Blue. I'm like, a donut. <laughs> if only. If only. But what does that have to do with anything? I don't know. Well, it's like somebody running out of a bank, having just robbed it. Everyone's pointing guns at them and them going, "Hang on!" and just playing Walsing Matilda on it. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I just like the way he dedicated a song to himself. I'd like to dedicate the song to me. <laughs> uh, <I'm laughs> Are other people supposed to do that? I think so, Nick. Uh, yes. I love how he keeps, since I received more information. <laughs> So it's sort of information that takes five days to clear. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, right, yeah, may be right. Thank you, right, may be right. But did you hear his setup? He's gone, you've heard me criticising the banks over the years. I've had a go at them, sure. 
But then the banks called me and pointed out that you weren't getting the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> it was like his vacation. Uh, yeah. uh, and then, and you got a problem with it? Uh, well, <laughs> it's come out this week that he uh, he confirmed a previously undisclosed one hundred thousand dollar deal with the former State Bank of New South Wales to provide advice and guidance on consumer perceptions. Good. John Law's providing advice on consumer. I'm just imagining. Well, when I was driving past my Bentley. <laughs> driving past my Bentley, I noticed there was long queues at the state bank. I sent my chauffeur in and he says people are waiting for up to five minutes. <laughs> what is it? How does that work? I have no idea. Well, I think we've done. I think we're done with laws. We're done. Well, we're are done we with done with the, the banks? The banks, well, they're the other half of this sordid little tale. But the banks have come out and apologised for the John Laws fiasco. Yeah. They haven't apologised for any of their behaviour. <laughs> just apologising for being busted, <laughs> for being sprung, basically. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah. we decided to go out on the street. Well, I went out on the streets myself to okay. find out uh, what people think about the banks. But it's funny because I started talking about the banks, but it wasn't long before uh, the talk turned to the other big story of the week. Oh, yeah. This program. <laughs> Have a look at this. <laughs> How much money would it take for you to say something nice about the banks? How much money do you have? <laughs> I've got two dollars. Two dollars? Yeah, one dollar of that goes for account servicing, obviously. Of course. <laughs> what about the bank service? Do you think it's good enough? I use the ATM, so oh, it's good enough for me, yep. Oh, that's where they want you, out on the street. That's right, lining up with everyone else. What about Junior here? Yep, she's got a bank account and she's doing well. You remember when the banks used to give little piggy banks away, plastic piggy banks oh, to, yeah, they to were children? Yep. Remember that? Yes. They don't do that anymore, <laughs> do they? Even. I think they give away baby's first next teller please sign. Yeah. That's a little sort of yeah. gimmick they've got going. Oh, is this the Mick Malloy show? Have Great you... show. Oh, really? Great show. Yeah. Watch both episodes. I'll just turn off Thank the you. mic and say what you really think. <laughs> Excuse me, madam, how much money would we have to pay you to say something nice about the Mick Malloy show? Um, a lot. A lot? Mm -hmm. I've got a dollar. That won't do it. All right. I've got five dollars. That won't do it either, sorry. I've got this. It's apparently for 50 grand. It's the best show in the world. I really enjoy it. I stay at home to watch it. All right, what's your favourite part of the Mick Malloy show? Um, just all of it in general. All of it? Great You've show. Not, you've never seen it. Are you a fan of Pendo? Who? Who's he? What offends you on television? Um, bad language. Bad language. <laughs> And That's what I've heard about the papers about your um, your show. But no, but I'm sure it'd be quite good. There's no bad language. No? Like that. There's absolutely no f***ing <laughs> bad language. Like <laughs> what sort of comedy would you like to see on television? Uh, well, I like the panel. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, they're uh, all right. I so, know. intelligent, uh, witty comedy. All right, but, but, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Offensive on television. Um, ignoramuses, I suppose. Oh, well, there's none of that on the Mick Malloy show. Have you seen that program? Yeah, that's where I was heading, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you a fan of the Mick Malloy show? Yeah, I am. Watched it last week. Yeah? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Oh, OK. wasn't too bad. That's an improvement on my mum's <laughs> assessment. OK, what's your favourite part of the Mick Malloy show? I've only watched it once when that little dwarf came on. Oh, right. Yeah, I found that personally offensive. What's <laughs> he a fan of on the telly? Uh, Mick Malloy, actually, himself, yeah, Does and uh, Mini, Mini Mick as well. Does he sit yeah. there and what did he think about the bit where the dog savaged Mini Mick? Was he sitting there going, I could have done a better job of that? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, what do you want to see on a Saturday night on your TV? Uh, sex, <laughs> lust, <laughs> and uh, Ricky Martin. Sex, lust and Ricky Martin. Absolutely. Well, we've got none of those, I'm afraid, on our show. We've got a dwarf. We got that uh, Via Sri Lankan and that uh, Friends program. Sri Lanka also we are looking that very famous about that. Is that right? Is Friends yeah. big in Sri Lanka? No. <laughs> Blue Murder, Blue Murder were probably, that was a fantastic program. It was with uh, Tony Martin. Was Tony Martin not at all? Tony Martin was uh, in that. The guy from no, no, no. East Street? Nettie Smith. Don't really? you remember me? Are you Nettie? Watch out or I'll snap you one. Oh, no. Day of Our Life. Which one? Day of Our Life. Oh, Days of Our Lives. <laughs> You're a big I'm fan of that. Like, because today I forget to uh, watch that. 
Like, have you set the video at home? Yes, yeah, yes. Have you just? Yes. Now, what do you want to see on Saturday nights, madam? Just, um... Good-looking men. <laughs> 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 well, enjoy your check. It takes uh, 500 days to clear. <laughs> good, good. There you go. There they are. So that's where you got to. That's right. And Eddie Maguire wants his big check back. <laughs> Look how I'm looking. Came out of his big checkbook. <laughs> I've seen the book, he's got stubs to match. As he does. But enough of our hoo-ha. Yeah. Maybe we should move on, shall we? We're yeah. all done, are we all silent? Sure. What have you got? I reckon it's time for some music myself. What do you think, Paul? You know me, Mick, always time for music, son. All right, well, why don't we check in with the Foves? <laughs> going on? Where's the band? Arch? What? What happened to the band? Where's the band? Aren't they I supposed to play us back in? Isn't we supposed to get the crowd whooping and hollering and head on to this with a whole heap of momentum? Fault. He's Hess, he's always nicking off. Don't blame me, mate. <laughs> I'll get to the bottom of this. I'll get to the bottom of this. I smell a big, fat, dirty rat. I knew this had happened. I knew this had happened. See who we got here. There's Chef <laughs> Barry. <laughs> Practicing for Mr. Puniverse again. He's got some catching up to do. <laughs> do you reckon he's got the scales of justice tattooed on his back? <laughs> Max Cady style? Um, I think it might be on. What about our other good friend, Kev? Here he is. Oh. <laughs> Worshipping at the shrine of Richard Wilkins. What the hell is going on? He what remembers a... when he was Richard Wilde. <laughs> the good old days, Tone. The good old days. <laughs> sure. And if I know Paul Hester... There we go. Jazz ballet! I knew it! <laughs> I knew it! 
<laughs> this happens every time. Uh, I, I think he knows you're watching him somehow. <laughs> He's going to be very embarrassed when he finds out we were peeking in on that. He was definitely playing to an audience He's, there, for sure. <laughs> That's outrageous. Are they coming back oh, at all? One could only hope. Hey, while they're out, why don't we fly through some of the other stories we missed. Here's a big one during the week, and I love this one myself. Uh, check that out. We're, we're in Sydney now. There's a whole stable of horses in the Cummings stable. Son of Bart. Yep. Yeah, not right. the big man himself. Son of Bart, 45 horses all on drugs. That's right. An entire stable. Every Ooh. one of them. Every one. Well, it only takes one, Tone. The rest oh, is peer pressure. Yeah, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? One goes, the next thing you know, they all go. But no one should be surprised. I mean, I've always said grass leads to harder stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can actually tell, Tone, when, uh, when, when the Cummings horses are racing. Yeah. Because they race in sunnies, not blinkers. Oh, That's very good. Yes, uh, <laughs> yeah. indeed. OK. Shall I continue? Uh, no, keep it keep You going. can tell in the starting gates, when the light starts flashing, they all dance. <laughs> no! <laughs> they think they're at some kind of rave. And in, and in the photo finish, you'll always tell his horse, because it's the, in the photo, it's the one with the jacket on its head. Just <laughs> like me. No comment. No comment. In fact, at the races the other day, one of his horses was put down. Yeah, it wasn't injured, it just hadn't paid up. Uh, you know? <laughs> the deal. I want you to see if you can make it to the next break with these. I actually... <laughs> Bob, I actually backed one of his horses. It was carrying 56 kilograms, all hashish. <laughs> I think I'm done. So. <laughs> hey, was that, the I, only, was that the only animal story in the paper this week? I, I saw was... Philip in the museum. He was looking pretty ill too. He's on some sort of sedative. <laughs> A damn good one. He, he, no, there was actually the, uh, the, cor the corgis. There's been one of the employees of Buckingham Palace has been caught getting the corgis drunk. There it is, just so he, you know, we're not mucking around. He's been, he's been mixing alcohol with their food and he's been getting them drunk and, and you know, making them dance and do all sorts of things. Uh -huh. But I wonder, is this the same guy who's been getting the Queen Mum drunk all these years too, you know, <laughs> on the, on the uh, sherry? So what are, you, what are you telling me, Dave, that, that someone's got the Queen's corgis drunk? The dogs are actually drunk? Yeah, they're drunk and they're stumbling around. But he only got them drunk when the Queen was away. And I want to know, how did they find out about it? I reckon it's like when you're a teenager and your parents go away for the weekend and you have that big party, but your parents come home early unexpectedly. Yeah. And so the, the Queen's walked in, yes. so had a couple of corgis dancing in the living room. She's running shocked to the bedroom. There were a couple of corgis making out on her bed. Oh. <laughs> and anyway, the Queen mum was probably that 18-year-old who went up to the bottle shop and bought all the UDLs for him anyway. <laughs> You know, here's the thing that annoys me about that story, or the thing I've been worrying about, is because if you're a dog and you're drunk, it's pretty bad because dogs have to eat their own vomit. <laughs> you'd, you'd be up all <laughs> night. <laughs> blah, unk, blah, unk. That'd go on for hours, wouldn't it? And were they or were they not pissed on 12-year-old whiskey? They were. It was there's, whiskey, yeah. 84 years in dog years. <laughs> 84 years old. What happened whiskey? to the days when royalty used to have big Irish wolfhounds sitting round? Those when did the, the corgi suddenly become <laughs> well, no, the royal the, dog? Uh, the Irish wolfhound drinks too much. Yeah. <laughs> you, need a sl you need a slab for each one of those, mate. <laughs> oh, dear. And what's the other story closer to home? What's this about the KKK in this oh, very country? This, uh, well, this bloke, he's now resigned, of course, the uh, mayor of Coffs Harbour, oh. John Smith. I think, well, we've uh, <laughs> we had to disguise the identity of that woman because <laughs> we wouldn't, accomplish it wouldn't it. want to hurt her reputation. How, how would you ever expect that he had right-wing connections with that fighter. I, don't know. I thought he'd be a raving communist with that sort of company. But this quote here is, is good. Uh, he's talking about the KKK. I don't know them and I don't know what they believe in, so I don't pretend to judge them. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fair enough. I mean, you know, I don't know them myself, yeah. but you know, sure the scary costumes, flaming crosses and racist agenda <laughs> tend to give you a bit of a pointer if maybe you want their end. A bit of a tip off, but beyond that, I think they're quite good blokes. So, yeah, indeed. Fair enough. Is this story? Is this from? This is in Coffs Harbour. That's right. Coffs Harbour. The, the that's, uh, that's the sad part about this story. Because yeah. when I think of Coffs Harbour, I think of Big Banana. Yes. <laughs> now I'm thinking KKK. <laughs> I was going back to the halcyon days of the Big Banana Bob. The big flaming banana. <laughs> the big, <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> the big <laughs> banana fritter. I just think <laughs> the Meg gets very upset in summer when the big banana goes brown. He doesn't like it at all. <laughs> I just think the Ku Klux Klan should get uh, John Laws working for them. You know, I've been very critical of the Ku Klux Klan. Then the Grand Dragon called me and pointed out that I wasn't giving you 
the whole story. <laughs> the KKK, the whole story, starting this week. Fantastic. I think it's a good idea. I'm looking forward to that. Sure. That's not as far fetched as it seems. <laughs> no. Hey, here is for me, this is the feel good story of the week. Here's some footage. Yeah. This, this woman is the first uh, shuttle pilot ever in the history of the American space program. And uh, that's got to be worth a round, eh? It's yeah. a... Well done, girls. Well done, ladies. There it goes. Go, no, Ricky. And um, you see, you see the, the shuttle taking off into space there, and the space is fairly large, but don't you just know it's going to come back with a ding? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mick. <laughs> so... <laughs> Thanks for going missing, Bob. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. You know, I reckon it might take them a little longer to get there than most, because I reckon that'll be the first shuttle to fly into space with a handbrake on all the way. I think we've polarised the room here, fellas. You know why it was delayed? Why is that? Because <laughs> when they got into the cockpit, she realised it was a manual, not an automatic. Yay, <laughs> <laughs> yay. I'm going to keep going. It's nice to know you're with me, fellas. You know, the plan... It's, <laughs> it's the only shuttle that stopped at a craft shop. Oh, no. No. It's, no, no it's, it's, it's taking a little longer than usual because on the way up, she has to drop by and pick the kids up after school day. You know that's the first... You know, you know why? Please, hey, hey, just for a second. You know why? And I'll save it here. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me save me. this. You know why a lot of women don't go into space? No, why? Because in space, the toilet seat is always up. Oh. Oh. All right! <laughs> okay, this'll do it. This'll do it. Houston, we have a problem. I've left the iron on. <laughs> Should I mention the Garfield doll? All right! It's getting violent. Look at these women. What do they do? Jeez Louise. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Um, How are you going to win them back, Mickey? Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> well, we've all got women to go home to, you know. <laughs> Here's how I'll do it. The other big story of the week, of course, was Nana's Day. And Nana's Day oh, is tomorrow. Yes, and it, it's one for the Nana's, isn't it? It's the first annual Nana's Day out. And we thought to celebrate. Earlier this week, uh, we dragged in a whole heap of Nana's to our office and, well, gave them a bit of a treat. Have a look. Elaine, thanks for joining us today. Happy Nana's Day. Thank you very much, Mick. That's all right. Lovely way. to be here. Indeed. How do you intend on celebrating? Are you doing anything special? Mm, well, uh, hopefully. Hopefully the grandchildren might call and see me. Oh, OK. I wouldn't expect too much. <laughs> One of them sitting just over there. <laughs> there you go. Oh, of course. And there's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, having a wonderful had a little nip and... Hello. I feel wonderful. Oh, and how many grandchildren do you have? I have nine. You have nine. Yes. Wow. And I bet you you treat them better than you treat your own children. Oh, it's just that, you know, you can always sort of, when they're little, Mick, you can give them back then when, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have six. You have six grandchildren. Mm. Wow. Have you got a favourite? Oh, no. They're all gorgeous. Oh, <laughs> correct answer. <laughs> you look way too young to be a nana. Oh, that's a lovely compliment, but I've got two beautiful grandchildren. You have? Oh, yes. Which one do you like the best? Oh, they're both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get someone. And you have a favourite? Tony no television. way. They won't see Absolutely it. Come on. No way. There's one you like no. more than the others, no. isn't there? Never get me. If there's something you could change back, what would it be? Oh, I'd just love to go back to when I was growing up, Mick. You reckon it was a better time? Oh, absolutely. You got anything you could sing for us quickly here? Oh. Could you? Would you like me oh, to? I'd me? like you to. Could you? Um. Anything off the top? <laughs> if I loved you time and again try to say My mother was and father were going to call me Jacqueline mm. and they decided they wouldn't because I'd be called Jackie for short and they didn't like Jack for a girl. So they called me April mm -hmm. and to this day my best friend and my sister call me Ape. <laughs> <laughs> with the e on it. <laughs> but anyway, this guy that I went out with had this, uh, he was 18 and I was 16, he had this battered up old truck. Yes. <laughs> he took us down the Esplanade at St Kilda and tried to make violent love to me. <laughs> <laughs>
for a retired of uh, Fletcher Jones, mm -hmm. and I was reception in the suit department. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I used to say to the guys, which way do you wear it, right or left? <laughs> I hope you don't have to cut that out. Oh, no, that's why I wear tracky dacks. It's, I work it out for myself. <laughs> you might want me to lift the next, who knows? I just want to say that this is the last one. You've had three of these already, so this is the last one, all right? Hey, Nanister, here's a phrase we hear from Nanister a lot. He's a nice young boy. Would you describe me as a nice young boy? Um, can I ponder on that question? <laughs> Robin would like some I thinking think, music. I think that possibly you were a lovely young boy. I think you would have been an adorable little boy. There you go. Lovely and fat and squidgy with dimples. And You've been I'd looking at my photo album. I'd love to see your knees. I think they would have had dimples. Oh, jeez. And then I think your mother must have been inordinately proud of you and then suddenly you started to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, we've got a bit of a surprise planned a little later for Nana's Day, so can you Ooh. hang around, maybe have another tipple for us? Love to. All right. I believe there's a surprise, and I said, I know what the surprise is. We'll be all lining up to kiss you. <laughs> Hang on a second. I hadn't contemplated it, but <laughs> that's not idea. a bad idea. Yeah. Knee deep in the grandmothers. Yeah. That's where I want to be. Ladies. Hang on just a minute. Don't touch the talent. <laughs> We've saved the best till last, ladies. This is what you've all come for. Hit it, maestro. Oh, skirts. I love the skirts. They're a big attraction to me. Oh, skirts. I love the skirts. Because there's not much to them, you see. Oh, they're down around your ankle. They're up around your knees. They're up around your head in the long. They've all got shorts on. Skirts. I love those skirts. They're such a big attraction to me. I'll have this one, please. Skirts. I love those skirts. That's it, baby. Oh, they're a big attraction to me. Oh, yeah, she's got a lot of go in her. <laughs> what about joining us, ladies? Come on. That's it, come on girls, join us. We've got men for all of you. Come on, Tony Martin, get your nuts in here. I love those girls. One more drink and I'll be anybody's. <laughs> Don't do me on stunt work, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. You've got to love those manners. Oh, You've got to love those manners. Yeah. You know. How pissed were they? Yeah, bit, talk about getting the corgis drunk. <laughs> I was actually cornered in the kitchen by the three Scottish grandmas. I know. For you a bit like of... to get out alive. There's no more Johnny Walker. <laughs> <laughs> All this champagne. No, no, you're going to have to go down to the bottle shop. <laughs> Skinny man. We should, uh, we should point out that three of the nanas had nasty falls on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a dark side. <laughs> Well, there's a dark side to every Nana's day. <laughs> so, so he's gone, uh, he tried to make violent love to me. Oh, it's like my, it. my grandmother would have never have said that. She would have said, tried to make violent whoopee. <laughs> <laughs> that takes the edge off it, really. They were making it? heaps of whoopee in the 20s, apparently. <laughs> apparently so. Oh. And, and didn't they all scrub up a tree? Because all the Nana's had made a special effort, they if had. you have a look. So that was Beautiful. great. Well done, one and all, and have a happy Nana's Day tomorrow. We're going to go to the break and be back with more in just a second. Don't go away.
show, have we? <laughs> Where the hell have you been as if I didn't know? <laughs> well, you know, there's shows going all over the studio. We ran into the wrong set. We got involved in the some football show. I drank some alcohol. Next thing I was in a, I was a cupboard with a big hairy man. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad we all got to the bottom of that. <laughs> That's cleared things up. <laughs> Yes, ballet. If I ever see you in those leotards again, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> All right. Oh, bugger me, it's Bobby Franklin! Yeah. Thanks for joining us, and I feel obliged to ask, how's your week been, Bob? <laughs> Well, it started quite strangely, actually. <laughs> I thought it might have done. Yes, I was approached by Brewer's Dictionary of Phrase and Fable. Oh, yeah. Who offered me a substantial amount of money to use this show to promote their product. Mm -hmm. And what did you say? I said, look, I'm not interested. Yeah. This is the third week running that I've been approached by people who've asked me to push their product mm. on this show. Mm. And I just feel that by doing it, I'll be killing the goose that lays the golden eggs. <laughs> killing the goose that lays the golden eggs, Bob. Interesting phrase, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It does, of course, allude to the old Greek fable in which a greedy farmer sacrifices future reward for present gain. Mm. Well, <laughs> to do that, you'd have to be a bit of a goose yourself, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> Brewers is a fantastic reference book. Mm. But isn't it time now, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm mistaken, isn't it time now to delve into a book of a different kind? Yes, it is, Mick. It's time for that catalogue of moments from life in the big city. It's time to open Bob's scrapbook. <laughs> married here next Saturday. Oh, congratulations. Oh, thanks. Um, anyway, we're just having a, a small affair, uh, just a couple of people, and I wanted to know if you could do some finger food. Finger food? No, I can't do that. Mm. Mm. What about some, just some sort of freshly cut sandwiches? Sandwiches, no. Mm. Tell you what would be nice, a roast. A roast, yeah, that would be lovely. Can you do that? No, I can't do a roast. Are you actually a chef? No. <laughs> Why are you dressed like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you should have to be misleading. Come on, sweetie. <laughs> Any luck? Yeah, that's one fifty bucks. Excellent. Fetch, <laughs> please. How you doing? Good, mate. Yeah. Been playing long. All my life, mate. Tough old game. Yep. Gary Jenkins, I see and see insurance. Hi. You um. You insured against sports injuries yourself? I think the club's got a policy, mate. Right. But you don't have independent cover? No. Well, that's something you might want to think about. General club policies are good, but they don't give you the best cover available. With the new season just starting, you might want to consider your options. Listen, mate, I'll leave you a card. <laughs> that's me there. I'll be around for the next couple of hours, either up here or down in the back pocket. We'll have a chat, we'll just grab some literature, I'll get that for you at half time. Anyway, have a think about it. Enjoy the rest of the game. How you doing? Tough old game. Oh. Oh. Three weeks in, Bob. Three weeks in and already it's a weighty tone. <laughs> well done. Hey guys, bit of a special moment. Do you mind if I do the shows first by Agrigag? Oh, sure. I promise it'll be good. Are we uh, allowed? I promise it'll be good. I won't let you down. But they're never very good. No, no, no just go with me. Just trust me on this one. This is a cracker. Is a big banana involved? Or? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> 
I'm glad it isn't, or there goes me punchline. <laughs> Think about it, Dave, what are you trying to do? Here? I'm attempting the first wave of a joke and you're cutting me down before I'm out of the block. You know what it's right. like? It's like you've come over from another network and are determined to sabotage this show. All right, Channel 31 are paying me to sabotage. Why can I say the trots are doing badly? They've slipped me 40 bucks cash, might I add. Check this story out here. You're going to love this. Yeah, yeah. Watch, you won't believe it. I'm going to get away with it. Is it with the big pineapple? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Look at this. What's Viagra done now? <laughs> Here's what they've done. Here's this. Viagra could double the lifespan of plants, fruit and vegetables according to uh, a university researcher right. okay. who's hard at it. Yep. Um, <laughs> that's a, uh, that wasn't the joke, by the way. Oh. The uh, Viagra to plants, you know. Yeah. I heard about this during yeah. the week and I thought I might give it a go. Yeah. So uh, I grabbed one of these. And uh, gave it some Viagra, and bugger me if it didn't turn out like that! It's <laughs> off! <laughs> you people don't know a good joke when you hear one! That's quality! Before, after! <laughs> and, uh, oh, done. Don't forget to send in for mixed Viagra joke fact sheet. <laughs> I might just leave them there. <laughs> so how about this bloke? How about this bloke? He's been chipping in all day and we haven't really introduced him no. properly as yet, have we? It's Dave O'Neill who we poached from another network. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Same time slot. <laughs> another network. He's joined us on the couch and he's been waxing away, but I feel we haven't done him justice. I don't feel we've, no. we've introduced you properly. No, my agent's been on the phone, my real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> said pay the rent. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> which, is, which is your business here, I imagine. <laughs> um, Dave, would you like to walk? Walk us through the story so far. Well, I've been on a lot of shows. I thought to introduce myself. I've put together a clip package okay. of some of my work on television. Yeah. So if we can go to that. Now, I've had a very salubrious career, if that's the right word to uh, use. Oh, salubrious? Oh, gee, I like it. New faces, for a start. I like you opening with a big gun. <laughs> When's that? Oh, that's me doing a character there. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago? Oh, this was about ten years ago. Okay, oh, don't swap the hats. Okay, I know you've got hair there. I'm improving there with you. Bert. Lovely. <laughs> We're getting secure, Bert. <laughs> You think you've got... Look at this. Look out. Now, there you go. Oh, <laughs> that's all that's all I mean, that really... Look at that. <laughs> the Michaela program? That looks like that a proper program. Uh, that was uh, from For Love or Money. And they, uh, <laughs> they do that so they can edit out the bad joke. Anyway, I've, I've read the jokes which have been written for me tonight by our comedy writer, Mike Crawley. Mike? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you come up with that character? <laughs> <laughs> and they really are appalling. Ethnic minorities. This is where I got my famous quote from the Eric the line, show, the most famous quote of mine. He'll turn out the local crackpot. He'll turn up and throw in his complete non sequiturs. Sausages. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> There's the money shot. <laughs> my own, my own wardrobe, and it's spread through to other shows, including this one. The panel which you're on. Actually required to appear in every Australian comedy program. Dave O'Neill. Dave Just making his Dave. cameo for this series. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Sausages. Sausages. <laughs> What's the big one? Oh, and I play many different parts, like in Jamone. Just watch out for me. Bit of character work. Oh, oh steady <laughs> on. Which, which one are you, Dave? <laughs> you are a chameleon. And put a wig on me, I'm a hippie, you know, anything. Yeah, because, you know, in some parts of Asia, cats considered a delicacy. <laughs> Charming. We're eating cat, basically. Oh, here we go. Oh, who's that big fella? <laughs> it's dangerous. It's, it's on the Elvis just before Elvis he died. <laughs> that bloke looks like he soiled a couple of bed sheets in his time. <laughs> oh, yes, Eric Bennett. And just so you can guess which one I'm on. It's hard to tell. Is that Chopper Reed? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Diamond Days hey. Amsterdam this week in I the work with all the big studio. ones, Tiny Perrin. The little oh. bit of help from I'm the one on the left, little girl on the left. gave them just 45 <laughs> minutes to write their next hit tune. Check this out. I mean, Diamond Days! <laughs> 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 Hey, now that's a very subtle character, Dave. Yeah. Okay. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong, but is, is that segment called Rock the Clock? I think it is. It's called Rock the Clock. Okay. It's a good one. Rock the Clock. Did you have to make your own wheel, Dave? I have to write a song on that subject within 45 minutes. And if they don't, I'm doing a character that's very hard to recognise me, guys. I'm acting. It's a subtle twist on it. Dave. Got to work with some big bands, though. Things are stone and wood. Yeah, there they are. Sensational. 
no. That's your best character yet. <laughs> Doing a very good pit on, right? <laughs> oh, I've been on the Hey Hey too, many times. Yep. Oh, I was actually drunk that night. <laughs> Oh, the gala. Oh, hey, here we go. Hi, my name's uh, Dave O'Neill. You may have seen me before on uh, public transport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and Jamone. Now, this is where I got to do a very big acting part with Alison White. Ah, uh, this is the talk of the town. This yeah. I've heard a lot about it. You acted a whole scene with Alison White. Alison White, White the Logie oh. Award winning oh. Alison White from Good Guys, Bad Guys. Yeah. Great cellulite program. <laughs> got to keep an eye out for it. Brian and Kevis too, as well. Uh -huh. There's been a lot of talk work. about this. Yeah, a lot of talk. Keep an eye for it. There, there he is! <laughs> Hesse oh, Shed, well received on Hesse Shed. <laughs> oh, Hesse's clapping as he get hailed with cans! It's a lot of that. The people who threw the cans were a little bit too enthusiastic, I thought. <laughs> and Gilbo. Gilbo! Nice to see my brother David in. David, nice to see you in. I asked David to put a tape in the video for me. Did you do that? Yeah, no worries, Russ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing behind but you. the I'm big one, up. midday. <laughs> no, just check out who's hosting this one. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 well, hello. There you go. And, uh, that's all Jeez, for today. Until tomorrow, that's life. <laughs> I tell you what, Kerry Ann was looking a little rough there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she'd had any sleep. And guys, you might remember uh, Dave from a recent album cover. Have we got that album cover? <laughs> oh, there he is. There. <laughs> <laughs> that's him on that's that cover. <laughs> oh, I've never been paid for that either. <laughs> the funny thing is, when I went on midday, which was about '94, I believe. They, they, the producers took me aside and said, look, uh, we don't want you to swear or say anything rude because we don't want you to offend anyone in the audience. I said, you've got Darren Hinch on for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the least of your problems. Yeah, don't worry about did you read this? I saw this. This was in a women's mag this week. That it, and it may be true, it may be not, but apparently Darren Hinch is running a lap dancing club in Adelaide. <laughs> that was, that's in a women's mag this week. You can look, but you can't touch. <laughs> it's the phrase ringing in my ears. And he's oh, hang on a second. The cameramen are playing funny back through the arm. That's very funny for a second. <laughs> for one second. Let's move on, fellas. <laughs> oh, you don't throw cans at him. <laughs> hey, um, Hesse, gang. Any, ch any chance of you bailing us out of this with a bit of a number? Yeah, we'll take you out. We'll take you out. What you got? We'll take you to somewhere. It's a, it's a, it's a fragile missile. I can't say anything more. That uh, it's uh, scary. Okay, I'm frightened. <laughs> Two, three. <laughs>
Bob Franklin. Hang on. <laughs> Boys, I've had a little word from some of my friends out there mm. that have suggested the show's a little bit too blokey. <laughs> <laughs> so for my friends at home... This is your answer. An apron. <laughs> Problem sorted. It's just like a carrot to me, man. It's fantastic. It looks good. I'm no Einstein. But do those cucumber sandwiches tell me it's time for a certain segment? It's a dad giveaway, isn't it? Every Again, time. A dad giveaway. Paul, perhaps you'd like to pour? I think... <laughs> <laughs> we have and, uh, uh, Patchy, maybe you'd like to spin. Uh, <laughs> me? If you wouldn't mind. Patchy, oh, grab uh, yourself a scone. We've stepped it up a gear. <laughs> <laughs> the crusts have been cut off the sandwiches. Oh, uh, just the way we like. Oh, it's oh, anarchy! Oh, it's anarchy! Oh, it's Collapse. Give them to me. Take Give it easy. Them to me. You can't be trusted, Patchy. Get out of here. Take control, Paul. You've got the apron on. I will. <laughs> hmm. What's going on? Well, I think we're ready. <laughs> so, how is. <laughs> Tell me, tell me about the footy. How was the footy? <laughs> Never mind the footy now, you dolt. <laughs> it's time for. Oh, I'll need a sandwich for this. <laughs> how delightful. <laughs> How delightful. <laughs> you know, Bob, 17 more shows. I don't know how this segment's going to get any more delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Have you left yourself room to move? I reckon it's already too delightful. It's, it's way too delightful. That's it's a they... head scratcher. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, guys, don't put them away. I know that is formally the end of How Delightful, but can I hang on to the cucumber sandwich, Bob? Go for your life. While I introduce Patchy, That's say hello! Not... Thank, you. Thank you. How are you, Patchy? I'm well, thanks, Michael. You Very got well. a sandwich? You got a tea? I'm fully equipped. You're fully equipped. What do you got for us in the way of entertainment news, Patchy? Well, before I go to uh, entertainment news, Mick, I've, I've brought you a present this week. Oh, hello. I was, uh, I was walking through my archives, mm. doing a bit of dusting, sure. as I do, my video archives. Ah. And I found some uh, rather extraordinary footage of uh, Monica Lewinsky in her high school graduation musical. Whoa. <laughs> That's just got to be good. This is amazing. Is footage. it clean? It is clean. Completely <laughs> G-rated the whole way, Tony. Okay. Uh, the musical was called The Music Men from uh, memory. And I think we've, we've got a title card here that'll prove it's a Monica that you're about to see in the, uh, in the vision here. And where, where have you found this, by the way? I uh, found it on an American, uh, American video from a show called The Daily Show. Here we go. This is Monica introducing herself to the crowd. <laughs> a 
she's, she's quite shy, really. Mm. <laughs> and her trademark number from the musical was called Shapoopy. She's the girl, he's back, he's found. She says, Shapoopy, 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 Shapoopy. Shapoopy, Shapoopy, Shapoopy. There she is, the woman who brought down a nation. <laughs> How delightful. <laughs> he wasn't, that, How delightful. <laughs> wasn't that a young Tony Martin in the waistcoat? <laughs> <laughs> Doing a bit of the old knees up he's famous for. Uh, good well. Mm. Thank you, Dakey. What else are we looking at? Uh, entertainment news wise, Mick, yep. we, uh, we ruffled a few feathers last week by uh, scaring the public with the fact that the version of Eyes Wide Shut we're getting here in Australia was going to be the Austin Powers version. I with would... the, uh, Genitals obscured. I uh, got a call from the film company during the week. We're getting the international version. Oh, yeah. The director's cut. So this is uh, with all the bawdy scenes included. Mm -hmm. All baubles, bells are ringing. Fantastic. Okay, so we're not getting the version where someone walks through with a double bass every time this <laughs> sex <laughs> occurs. No, we're safe as milk there. Safe as milk. Speaking of Tom Cruise, the uh, the release date of Mission Impossible 2, which is still shooting in Sydney, was originally going to come out in, I think, around December this year. It's been yeah. put back by seven months. Way I come. Uh, I think Tommy's been hitting the promotional trail for Eyes Wide Shut a bit too heavily, and mm. the film still has about another three weeks of shooting left in Sydney, so mm. a few problems out. So what's going to happen? It's just going to delay the film indefinitely <laughs> and, until Tommy hauls his buns back to Oz? No, it's, kind of, it's the kind of big bo box office hit that can only come out at Christmas or in the American summer break, which is June next year, so I think they're going to hold on to it. Yeah. Mm, okie dokie. Yeah. We had similar problems when we were making Porky's 2. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not open that can of worm, Bob. We'll be here forever. <laughs> Now, uh, Australia can't keep out of the film news headlines and uh, Paramount Studios announced this week that um, they've optioned the rights to the story of the 1998 Sydney to Hobart yacht race. OK, well, that'll mm. be the feel-good film of the year, won't it? <laughs> well, it What's the deal? So. so who's making it? Paramount is it being made overseas or being made here? It's based on an article that ran in Vanity Fair about two or three months ago. Mm. And it's, I think it's the story of one of the boats where four went out, only one came back. Is that right? Uh -huh. But the boat will go out again this year. This is what I can't believe. How's this in boxing? One bloke goes down, one bloke gets his brain scrambled, and it's, oh, we've had enough of that. They should ban the sport. They start a race that goes from Sydney to Hobart. How many people died in it? Because it's rich blokes. They would get to go again next year. <laughs> so one single complaint, how many emergency workers risk their lives in that? And it'll go ahead again this week, next week, next year. It's just a joke. And if there's a film, does this mean, will someone have to play John Howard? Because that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you get? Jeez Louise. Oh, I can hear the voice right oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm thinking the dad from Mork and Mindy with glasses on. That's <laughs> the best not a bad come call. up with. <laughs> not a bad call. <laughs> and finally, uh, American actor Paul Rubens is uh, resuscitating his Pee Wee Herman character. Remember Pee Wee? Oh, right, yes. Yeah. Fell afoul of the law about seven years ago. Of course. That's right. Wasn't but it? since President Clinton, that just seems if you bring back <laughs> Pee Wee, we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> He's Pee Wee's mucking around down the shallow into the pool, <laughs> really. <laughs> well, um, yeah, Disney Studios are going to release a film of his in about one year's time. Start shooting in about two months. Okay, mm -hmm. well, I look forward to that. I'm counting the days. Mm -hmm. But moving on from something lighter to something heavier, the uh, the sequel to Once Were Warriors, What Becomes of the Broken Hearted, was released this week. Okay, and have you had a look yourself? No, I've had a look, Mick, and uh, it is a Barry Crocker of a film. Yeah, really? Mm. Well, there's some controversy. Oh, mm. Is that it bad? Is. I'm going to have another cucumber sandwich. <laughs> What's the deal? It's According, not good. It says on the poster that Pete Smith is starring in it. But yeah. actually, this is not a joke. It's like he's fifth fifth down on the run. Pete Smith. Smith. Pete Smith. Our yeah. Pete? I don't know if it's the same one. I'd like to see him smashing, you know, blokes with pool cues, but I'm sure <laughs> we'll have it's to wait. It's a fairly common name. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll accept that. <laughs> Well, the, um, the main problem with this film, it's, a, it's like a combination between a knockoff of Mad Max and just an acting school for really bad actors. And if we have a look at the vision we're about to see, you'll, you'll actually see the, uh, the New Zealand version of Pete Smith with curly black hair and tattoos. Let's just take a look at this right here. That's him with the nose ring. Social call from Black Hawk. Ain't a hawk no more. <laughs> That's him. That is Pete Smith. <laughs> Do I 
would that be? What's in the bag? Ain't a bomb, is it? I want to talk business. Shut up. Hoping it's a deal. Disney film, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Come over here. You must be crazy walking here. You know we could waste it just like that. I need a fight. I'm here for the boy. Well, Ooh. don't need to see it really. We just played uh -huh. half of it. What <laughs> <laughs> an extensive clip. Here's my favourite bit. Can we go back see the bit where the guy cops it, the spanner right there? Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Now, he must have a metal plate in his hand. That actually went jink. It's got a knock up. Here's the original version they were going to go with till they tamed it down. Good Dinner's on! I love that extended door. So there you go. So what's that called? It's called What Becomes of the Broken Hearted. And, and it's, a, it's ostensibly a sequel to Once We're Warriors. Yeah, and if, you, if you've seen the original, it completely ruins the legacy that the first one left us with. It's just not worth seeing, basically. No, okay, okay. Mm. Are you done? I'm Are you all done. silent, Patchy? Thanks for popping by and bringing us up to speed. And before we go out, uh, we, well, thank you, Archie. What I've just that? been informed we have Judith Lucy live from Montreal after the break. Right. But to take us out to this one, guys, I've received another videotape from Adelaide. And I think that means it's time to put the cucumber sandwiches away. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because uh, here comes some loose booty. <laughs> Oh, leave him alone, you bastard. <laughs> Lake Queensland, mate. Lake Queensland. What's up with Queensland? Beautiful one day, perfect the next. Shit house the next? Ah, no, no. We try not to swear. I don't. <laughs> oh, come on. It's a floor, man. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> It's, it's beautiful! <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Gay for real? Oh, oh! Yeah, it's nice! Open the floor with that water, it, man! It night and warm! Oh! You have more for me? Definitely not, mate! Do I you reckon you're cracking you myself! <laughs> you start raving mad! Give it to him, Bobby! Oh! <laughs> Three guys for real, or what? Welcome to Round the Square. Yeah, that's Australia's largest outdoor dining alfresco cafe. We'll put your order through on our electronic handheld. One of its kind in Australia. We'll begin by your table number. 
such as that. We we'll put through another complimentary coffee. I won't charge you on the house. No, 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 no. How long are you planning to stay here? I'm black, but I'm always a little bit nervous. Then when things like this happen, you know. So I've been to the Barossa Valley and. Oh, jeez! Oh. You know what? Want to get three units or? No, 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 don't, no. I think it's all right. Where'd you fall from? What attempt a live cross, live cross here, Tone, because yeah. uh, Judith, as we know, is in Montreal for the Montreal Comedy Festival. That's right. And in fact, last night, Judith hosted the gala. And in the past, I believe, uh, the gala has been hosted by people like uh, Jerry Springer, uh, really? Luke Perry, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the yeah. one Judith hosted last night, uh, I believe, was hosted by Rob Lowe. But at this stage, it's mere speculation. Why don't we ask her, Judith, are you there? Gonna be a man in motion, honey, <laughs> oh, a pair of wings. Take me where the eagle flies higher and higher. Hello. What can I say? Rob Lowe and I kind of hit it off. <laughs> I, I, I hope you got the whole thing on video, Jude. <laughs> you betcha. Listen, in all honesty, can you... I tell you that I um I didn't get anywhere near Rob Lowe last night. He did host the gala, but I'm not making this up. Luke Perry, who hosted one of the other galas, yeah. came up to me after the show, shook my hand and said, you really remind me of my wife. <laughs> Luke Perry. Luke Perry. Wow, Luke. Can I just say to you, can I ask you guys the question, mm. is there anything that I wouldn't do for the sake of a gag? <laughs> <laughs> you're frontline troops and you're an absolute trooper. Hey, how's the festival been going anyway? Oh, look, it's been going fine, but just before I get to that, I just have to tell you that uh, because in terms of doing gags, mm. it was a toss-up between looking like this and, look, I know I'm looking good because the makeup woman just walked in and said that a person who saw me in the corridor turned to her and said, I think a homeless woman has gotten into the building. <laughs> but it was a toss-up between looking like this and popping on a little something that I picked up in a souvenir store the other day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I'm hoping that that is getting some kind of laugh because it cost me $100. I don't, I don't think you spent the night with Rob Lowe. I think you spent the night with Chiefy from the Village People. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling a little f troop. But I've got to tell you, it cost me $100 because the woman said to me, no, it's authentic. And I have to tell you that I don't know if Indians actually used elastic and felt. <laughs> I mean, I know they were into Velcro. <laughs> but look, I will get on to the festival because um, yep. I've got to tell you, the audiences are a little different over here. Mm -hmm. I did a gig the other night where the compere was talking to the audience. And listen, I've done enough talking to the audience, uh, audience of gigs, you know, to know that Australians enjoy it so much that, you know, they'd rather have lava in their underpants. <laughs> but yes. a woman has stood up mm -hmm. and has 
pr- produced these photographs of herself before she'd lost all this weight. Like, so she had these photographs on her where she's looking like a small shopping centre. <laughs> and, you know, so she's a walking Jenny Craig commercial. Uh. And I am just sitting there thinking, I don't think an Australian would carry photographs around with them. You know, even if the before-after scenario involved their head growing back. <laughs> I've made the mistake of going up to the compound afterwards and saying, hey, what about that woman with a photograph? And she's gone, I know, she lost a hundred pounds. I mean, I've just gone, good for her, good for her. And I'm just sitting there thinking, I am so not in my own country. <laughs> But the city's gone comedy mad. As in, what's Montreal because... like? What is it like as a city? Well, uh, it's kind of weird because there's not that much to see, but they have been pulling the comedy stops out because they've mm. actually popped red dye in some of the fountains. And I'm telling you, there's nothing more hilarious than a fountain that looks like a burst artery. <laughs> Tell you what, it takes me back to the time a friend of mine tried to take their own life. Oh. Tell you what I am happy with. What's I'm that? very happy with the cigarette. Oh, yeah, what's the story? Well, of course, I'm not that happy about the fact that the box is the size of a Tampax packet. <laughs> but I am happy with the warnings because, listen to this. La cigarette cause de maladie pulmonaire mortelle. You see, that just sounds lovely, doesn't it? It doesn't sound like cigarette cause fatal lung disease. It sounds like a Marie Chevalier song. But, uh, oh, no, I've lost my ear thick. Hey, that's all right. I'm losing mine at this end, too, Joe. Just, oh, just send I'm your messages now. via semaphore. <laughs> Are you oh, there, Jude? I am, I'm back. This is great. I've been waiting for this to go off the rails. I was, I was <laughs> after a bit of... Are you there, Jude? Yes, Are I'm you back. there, Jude? <laughs> Are you there, Jude? My telly, it's great, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. So what do we need to know about the city? I tell you what you need to know about the city because, uh, well, they really do speak French. I'll tell you that much for free. Mm-hmm. And I have cockily turned to my manager, Kev, on the way here and I've gone... Don't worry about it, Kev. I won the French prize in high school. (laughs) Now, I was also very good at physics when I was in high school. And if you ask me now, you know, why does sound travel further at night, I'd probably go, (laughs) cause. So I had my big moment when... um, because we haven't been letting housekeeping into the flat because, you know, we love living in our own filth. Sure. <laughs> so I walked into our flat the other day and a woman had come in and she just started cleaning up. So I said to her, listen, don't worry about it. Well, actually, I probably would have said, because I get so Aussie when I'm out of Australia, I probably would have said, piss off, you old Sheila, and burst into k Sand." <laughs> but, um... She's turned to me and she's gone, listen, I don't speak English. And I thought, well, that doesn't exactly sound like Mandarin. (laughs) I thought to myself, no problem. I have then stood there for five minutes and finally I wound up dealing with the situation by going... So, you know, basically I studied French for five years and I can play a really mean game of charade. (laughs) But I have to tell you, in terms of sort of sightseeing and stuff, we got into a taxi the other day and first off, can I say, the taxi driver said to us that Mm. the state of Quebec was actually bigger than Australia. Mm. And we just said, really? Because, you know, it gets to the point where you just think it's so much easier to agree. He probably could have said, hey, I hear your prime minister's a wombat. And I would have gone, yeah, his policies are pretty weird, but boy, can that guy burrow. (laughs) And he's turned to us and he's gone, but have you seen the most spectacular tourist attraction in Montreal? Sorry, I've got no idea what that accent is. And... He's talking like it's the city of Atlantis. Mm. And no, he's actually referring to an IMAX cinema. (laughs) And, you know, I really didn't have the heart to tell him that, A, we have IMAX cinemas in Australia, Mm. and B, yeah, I've come halfway around the world to see what is essentially a big telly. (laughs) But then I went to the Tourist Information Centre and I realised that it probably was a bit of a highlight 
because the only other alternative seems to be a tour of the biosphere. And boy, this sounds worth a trip because, oh, look, I'm looking at the French side. <laughs> it's like that Steve Martin routine. Those French have a different word for everything. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, um, these are some of the attractions of the biosphere. I'm telling you what, I must have a really roomy ear. <laughs> This is what you can see at the biosphere, an anti-shark protection cage. <laughs> My God, are those metal bars real? And are they in the shape of a square? <laughs> a team of experienced interpretive guides. So I guess they've been around for a while and they're into modern dance. <laughs> There's a bombshell. Watching the toilet's never been so much fun. <laughs> well, that's fantastic, Jude. You really are. You, you, you're our roving reporter. You, you've done a treat of a job. Are you going to be back here next week live? You bet. My buns are back on that couch. All right. We're saving you a spot. Judith. Judith. Bob. It's Bob Franklin, <laughs> Channel 9. <laughs> <laughs> Dale O'Neill, 31. <laughs> what the hell are you doing there, Dale? I'm pretending to be you. <laughs> I hope you've got a wig and a skirt on. <laughs> no, but I've got breasts. <laughs> Judith, so, I've heard that they have policemen over there who ride around on horses. Is that right? <laughs> no, it's not true. Oh. <laughs> well, we're going to have to leave it there. <laughs> when you thank Jean for joining us live from Montreal. She's a great sport. Thank you, Jude. And uh, we'll be back with Pendo in just a minute. Yeah. On you, Jude. So he's fallen about 30 feet, broken both his legs, done a couple of ribs, smashed his cheekbone. No insurance, nothing. Absolutely nightmare. Oh, drink up, boys, we're on. Joining us on the couch for the first time tonight, it's Pendo. It's Meg. So, uh, Everyone. Now, Pendo. We had something pretty big planned, but we're, we're running way over. Yes. We had a bit of trouble with Jude early, and we didn't know if we were going to get her, so we've been, uh, well, you know, stretching it out, and now we've <laughs> we've got Jude. We're going to have to crunch you right down, it's all mate. Right, pal. It's all right. We've had, it's all right. we had to throw a couple of things out, but cut to the chase. What's going on? Big we week of sport. Big, big week, week of sport. sport. We'll go straight into what we did on Friday. Oh, <laughs> mate, what a, was that the one of the best days you've ever had in your life? Day. Incredible fantastic. day. Fantastic. Where were we? Explain Cold it to the Park. people. Colder Park. We've been in headed out to Calder Park this weekend's round eight of the touring car series. The V8. At, uh, at Calder Park and uh, mm -hmm. we'll just get a little shot on that. Thanks boys. And uh, I'm going to try and Hello. make it down there. <laughs> well, okay, it's a track. Anyway, we've headed out there Mick and... Uh, yeah, I, think we're all, I think we're all acquainted with the track now. Yeah, well. uh, I think I could drive that thing blindfold. Well. <laughs> Yes, we could actually, because we went ahead of that, then we got beautifully looked after by Paul Marinelli and his crew out oh, there. Oh, mate, we? they were fantastic. They really were. And we, we were hitched up for a couple of rides in the V8s, the supercars, round the old Calder. I was in with Craig Lowndes, which uh, I was quite happy yeah, about. Yeah, you got the primo ride. Right. In the Mobile One. In the Mobile One. And I was, was in uh, with Cameron McLean from the Greenfield Mowers uh, racing, racing crew. Uh, right. He's a young bloke having a crack and uh, very, very good, very quick. Mm -hmm. And he's got the old Dick Johnson car. That's right. Marvellous. So they've never felt adrenaline like it, I think, out of mm -hmm. everything, Bob. You mm -hmm. He was a young bloke on crack. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if he was on crack, but we were flying, Bob, I'll tell you. <laughs> Gee, where, where are you coming from? <laughs> Another cucumber. Yeah, did it But uh, the adrenaline, Bob, you, you, you take off oh, out of the You want to talk to me now? Yeah, have a chat. Have a chat. Yeah, listen to this. You're not bad, are you? <laughs> anyway, you take off out of the pits, Megan, you're fishtailing straight away. Absolutely. I, I thought they'd take off quite slowly. Uh, no, it's straight into it, <laughs> as it turns out. Yeah. Have, have, have we got a package? W w was that on, on this one here? <laughs> <laughs> very smart, Tony, very smart. But they're getting... I... 
Leave my buddy Pinto alone. Yeah, yeah, no. He's going to rip his shirt open and we're all in a lot of trouble. <laughs> all right, we'll take a look at the package. Let's we had a, a great look. day out there and uh, it was magnificent fun. And uh, if you're not doing anything tomorrow, get out to Calder for round eight of the touring cars. Bob, right. you'll be out there. I'll be there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, they're handing out crack, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a shot of that? <laughs> Oh, hold this, hold this, Tony Martin, hold this. Uh, you go gone mad. Um, but anyway, there have been big crowds at the touring cars this year. They had 40,000 at uh, Brisbane. The new track got open there the other week in Brisbane. And uh, a few weeks before that, they had in Darwin. It was like the Grand Prix out there. They had 40,000 up there. So they're expecting a big crowd of colders. If you're not doing anything, get out there tomorrow. Where are these cameras? Get out there tomorrow. Let's, let's, let's go to the Let's go over the package. Come on. Are we there yet? How was it, bro? That's it, son. You've got to be happy with that. It's in, son. This is Craig Lowndes, everyone. He's just taken me for a couple of laps around Calder. That was that was great fun, Craig. What's the deal there? Is this oh. what you do every day, all day? Well, I'd love to. Yeah, pretty much. This is my this is my employment, yeah. so I love it. Mate, he, he's going down <laughs> the back straight. He was doing 260, about 265, and he had a large coke between his knees, <laughs> and was still taking the pickles off his cheeseburger. <laughs> Top speed for top speed. Ah, uh, he would probably be 250, 260. 250. Yeah. What about a Bathurst? 285, 290. Yeah, you've yeah. done a few Bathursts? Yeah, I've been. This, this car last year? No, Dick raced, Dick and Steve raced this one last this year. This is the old, this is Dick Johnson and Shell Helix old car. Yeah, so that's right. So it's had yeah. a bit of success, a lot of success. You've got this round of Calder coming up uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Um, hey, fellas, you can't drop me down the shops, can you? <laughs> 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 I, just, I just got to get a carton of milk and some fags. Meet, meet Cameron, Nick. Hey, Cameron, how are you, bro? Yeah, right. Jump in, Mick, and go and get some cigarettes. Hang on a second, fellas, I'm just going to hook you up to a caravan. <laughs> no, it'll be great, fellas. One lap. I was loving it, though. You reckon some of the other blokes scream, I'm going, come on! Yes, yes! He was frightening me. Because <laughs> <laughs> that strap disappeared in between my chins. <laughs> hey, Pendo, button up. Yeah, just, you're distracting me. I can't stop doing this, you know, about this scene. It's hot. Where's the drink? There's a night out for the girls. <laughs> hey, that's got to be good. Come and get us. What happened there? What happened there? Pendo. Pendo gets the cap and I get the Fonzie helmet. <laughs> How's that work? Madness out there, Tony Martin. They've got their eye on you out there. Okay. The next time we go out, you're out there. Absolutely. So you'll find that. They just seat. attach that flag with the black squares to my head and <laughs> <laughs> I waved at the end. And Barry's going mad over there in the band. If you don't mention the all-black. See, all the all-blacks. Well, yes, unfortunately, and, and Australia, the all-blacks have beaten us this afternoon. Oh, um, what's happened? I was taping that pendo. Oh shit! So. <laughs> uh, on you. Another big news this week, Mick, Paul Rifle, Richmond boy, yes, giving indeed. it away this week. Yeah, uh, quite a too. great career, though. Uh, it was a sensational career, and well, I think we're going to try and get him on the program next week. He's it's, all, it's all happening in cricket because uh, I think uh, McGrath got married. Yes. Steve War had, had a kid, I think, yes. during the week. Yep. All, in fact, yeah. while, while the baby was being delivered, he was standing in gully. <laughs> <laughs> and three slips and a point. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and Paul Rifle, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, uh, do you know why he did it? I mean, I know, what is he, oh, 33 I, I think, now? Yeah, he's got, on the baby, he's got a baby, second baby on the way. Coming and uh, I think he probably figures great way to finish. Absolutely. He's... Thanks very much. Good on your heads. <laughs> uh, great way to finish too. That uh, World Cup, a uh, couple of World Cup, <laughs> couple of World Cup finals, Absolutely. and uh, a couple of Ashes victories over there. A couple of West Indies victories. That's the other fantastic. thing I want to mention to you too. This weekend, good luck to Mark Ocalupo. Uh, one of the most amazing sporting stories. Absolutely. I'm going to do talk about him more later on the year. But uh, he's winning the world title in the surfing this year. Great. Huntington Beach Pro starting this week. The AP Pro. He won at 85. That's mm. 14 years ago now, okay. as a youngster, 33, and it will be the greatest sporting story of all time <laughs> if, if he pulls it off. So good luck to Oki. Fantastic. Put right. it, putting out everything else happening as well. So, right. um, Look, we'll catch up again next week, Pendo, yes. or either sport, but in the meantime, I'm about to throw to some, uh, some old buddies of yours yes. again. The faves over yeah, there. Those are boys. They're sensational. Just before they uh, they head on into this, can I come over? Can I show them this? This is the faves album. It's called Lazy Highways. You want to get that. There it is right there. <laughs> 
But chaps, we're going to play something now, or well, you're going to play something now that's not even on this album, is it? Because I believe it, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a world premiere. It is indeed, Mick. It what? is saved the best for you, mate. You've saving the best? What have you been cooking up, Coxie? What do you call this one? Well, we call this give up your day job. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, is that that advice for me? <laughs> no, not at all. Don't give up your day don't job. Don't give up your negative, day job. It's a positive comment. All it's right, mate. Comment. Well, I'm going to step out and leave you boys to it. Here they are, the five. <laughs> We've been joined on the couch by a couple of the faves. Say hello to Jack and Coxie. Yeah. Hey. Well done, fellas. Thanks, thanks for coming Mick. by and dropping a couple of numbers, oh, too. Thanks for having us. That was, uh, it was great no stuff, worries. and that was a world premiere of, the, uh, of a new song. We've got to be seeing it. Yeah, it'll probably never appear on a record anywhere and just fade oh. into oblivion. Oh, come on, Coxie. Oh, it dies on the vine, but, you know. I liked how the two, other, the two other guys faced each other. It was very ABBA. 
You know, <laughs> on the keyboard. I'm glad so, you noticed that, Look, that wasn't a coincidence. That was something we choreographed was really and uh, we did the work. And hey, uh, you boys, how many albums now? Is it five albums? Uh, we've done four, yeah. You're so done next four? one will be the fifth. That's fantastic. Whoa. And how long have you been together? Because I watched a doco on you boys. And uh, it's a great group dynamic. It's, uh, I, yeah. I just think it's fantastic. You're a bunch of friends first. You love the music and you're still together, even despite a few bad runs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, but you want uh, to uh, It's funny you should mention because it was our the 11th anniversary from our very first gig ever last night, and we actually got down to my place down Whoa. in Murdoch and oh, put on a few beers for the lads. A bit Obviously. of a scene. Yeah, well, thanks for the invite. <laughs> <laughs> you, you sit down on my couch and you help yourself to cucumber sandwiches. I but did, where was I, I, I? I didn't even ask. You didn't ask. They're you always, just, uh, always to me like and Angie, yeah. blokes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now, now Pendo, you know these, but well, I know yeah. you boys. From the well, old Manalizer Football Club, and we, club. we used yep. to get around together. We all kind of grew up on the same <laughs> Mornington Peninsula. How yeah. do you know this man? It was from the cricket club. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, old, old, old sporting adversaries. And, yes, um, a few tussles on the ground with Phil as well. Phil, Phil actually, yeah. hey, Phil. I'm actually wrapped. You play that playing like millionaire song, Phil, because I reckon that's your career. Career last year, I heard 20 runs out of about 10 knocks. <laughs> <laughs> <Couldn't work. laughs> really, that's fair, Nickham, isn't it? Couldn't couldn't work out whether he's going to be a rock star or playing a uh, you know playing a cricket side. Yeah. But uh, we've, got, we've got some cricket photos. Have we got the boys and they're a bit younger and they all played at Man Oh, Coxie. Really <laughs> up at the... Sean Graff next to you at the back there. Oh, there you go, the right hand corner. Did you always model yourself on Luke Gale? There Garrett? he is, Coxie. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I can't believe I didn't get late. You look a bit like Luke Garrett. Yeah, Luke Garrett. You can't believe I get late now. What's the rest You know, I wasn't going to put that one on you, Coxie, but I've heard, I heard a rumour. How's this? You're the, you're the lead man, you're the front man in a rock group, but you can't can't get amongst it. What's the deal? This was a point <laughs> made. Hey, listen, listen, this was a It's point. a vicious rumour for years. <laughs> it's not. It's a point made in their own documentary. What's the deal? I mean, you see, you're a laydown, Ms. Here. <laughs> Hello, I'm lead singer in a band. Come and get me. Well, once, it's again, easy. once again, this is something that was choreographed pre show. You and me got together, Mick, and you promised you'd. In return for us coming on tonight, you put out a bit of a call to the ladies out there that I was so something of a desperado and <laughs> I've had a sort of a fairly dry yeah, run for the last 32 years, but, <laughs> but I, I know I'm going to break at any moment. <laughs> You're about to turn yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll just not. have a look. There's a shot of Phil, too, when he was playing uh, junior cricket years ago as well, all at the same club. Oh, look. Phil, on the left. Just, yeah, just, have a look at I that. I think Mike Munro's about to come in and... Oh, look at that. Gee, where's Phil? Look at the bloke next to Phil. John has that. And there's Krimmer. It's Krimmer. Oh, this is fantastic. Can we Jack do this for a couple of hours? Yeah, yeah, we've got Jack Dyer as well coming up as well in a grand final that he uh, took yeah, some wickets in. We're going to go Jack, to that now. Base player. Yeah. With hair. Up the the fourth 11. I never had hair. Up the back. Look at him. Four for 75, 21 overs, Jack. Is that right? Yeah, that's better. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the crazy thing about these blokes, you know, you give up a day job, that's an interesting song for you. All you do is sit at home and write songs and drive other blokes nuts, I'm told. He builds boat sheds. <laughs> He's called, he calls himself Boat Shed Heads, and all the Boat Sheds in Mornington Peninsula, Jack's basically done. So if you need a Boat Shed done anywhere around Australia, Boat Shed Heads. Oh, have we got a number we can flash oh, up? Wow. Yeah, got up. I've got a panel van for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Great worthy certificate. Hey, now, hey, you... Hey, now you get back in your box. Why? Because these boys can sink you. Hey, yes. Dave O'Neill, don't you pipe up. Why is that? You Coxie had a bit to do with Dave. Game round. <laughs> I'm just amazed how things flow on this show. I mean, just without any pre planning, and suddenly things come up that are such coincidences. And of course, Dave, you were in a famous Melbourne band. Well, not famous. Okay, shoot, I went going. I used to be Greek. What can I say? Um, no, no, I was. I used to play with you guys. I was in a band called uh, Captain Coco. You played with and him? you guys. Uh, and what was the band called? <laughs> Captain Coco. That is brilliant. I'm writing that down. <laughs> Where can I get their albums? <laughs> down the trash and treasure market, I'd suggest. I've got to go to my garage, actually, and um, we used to support... Oh, you guys used to support us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a bit of a sore point. Yeah. Jack, you're kidding. That is a bit of... No, no, I, no I, I, that's fair enough. I mean, you, were, you guys you had a yeah. few time. We, I mean, six months or so. You supported was, us, and we supported bands like Geisha. At, 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 the, oh. at the Frankston roller skating rink, I remember. And the power went out because they all used their hair dryers at the same time. <laughs> that's a true story. So that was the chain. It went Foves, Captain Coco, Geisha. Geisha. Oh, you've climbed the ladder, fellas. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to go to a quick break. We've got to knock this over. Have we got some Captain Coco to go to the break with? Oh, you can't show Captain Coco. Come on! Oh, Captain Coco! Check out we're, going to, we're going to the break. Have a look at this. Check out how skinny I was. Captain right Coco. David and Glenn oh, from Captain Coco. Give him a big hand. Thanks for coming in. Now, let's talk about Captain Coco. You guys are an independent band. 
And uh, he got quite a few tools to promote himself. So tell us about that. That is me in the middle. Apart from the album, so we got the album out. <laughs> now to promote the album, we put out a press kit. And I'd like to thank Flock David and Guys, there we go. Have a look at this for cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Are we on bass? There I am, young, good looking. I, and look how high he's got the bass strap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look. There's the wiggles. <laughs> now, there's a bit of bass play by me, a bit of flea. Look at Check it out. Here we go. Okay, yeah, see, Arch, we got time for a segment. Yeah, Can we do yeah, this? Yeah. I really hope, it, yeah, a, a tiny segment. Small segment. I yeah. think it's time to play, gentlemen, bombshells. Oh. Oh. There it is. There's the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. I must be right there. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, oh, That's how they go. This hey, is, I'm, I've got a bombshell. Have you got a bombshell? Uh, this show finished about three minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it comes. It comes. Oh, that was a massive bombshell. Sorry, this segment's still being rehearsed. <laughs> so is this going to air or not? I don't know. All right, I'm going to lead off with a bombshell. And here, here's something I know that you guys mightn't know. Ricky Martin once wanted to be a gynaecologist. <laughs> now there's a bombshell. Is that true? That's true. That's true. Well, so, would, why would I make that up? So he's 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 living la vulva loco. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> that's the best I can come up with. <laughs> uh, uh, now that's a bombshell. <laughs> living no, la vulva loco. No, that's the first time I've ever seen the word vulva worked into a comedy bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was told we were off air. Actually, make up a bit of peace. Finding the bottles. Living la vulva loco. Living la vulva loco. <laughs> Fits better. I was going to do inside. Outside! <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Bob, if you've got a bombshell. Well, Mick, the, uh, the word fauves is French for wild beasts. That's one of the interesting entries you'll find in Brewers. <laughs> There was a bombshell. Is that true or did you make that up? That's very true. <laughs> it also informed the French school of art fauvism. I've said too much. <laughs> oh, jeez, Louise. Hey, Pender, are you sitting on a bombshell? I haven't got too many of them out of me, I don't know. Yeah, OK, shall we keep moving around the table? Mm -hmm. Patchy, you must have a bombshell. I, uh, I know the real name of one of Australia's all-time greatest living actors. Uh, that... oh. Do you want to tell it to you? Yeah, please. Yahoo Sirius's real name is Greg Peed. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big bombshell. Greg Peed. P E A D. Well, Pedo. <laughs> Pedo. It's, a... it's not far removed from Pender. <laughs> his, uh, mother, his mother remarried a, a man with the surname In His Pants. I don't know if there's a hyphenated <laughs> name. Uh, Hang on. Oh, look. Peed in his pants. Okay. Well, I think we've got one of those <laughs> wacky Bottles. marriage names. Bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Dave O'Neill, do you have a bombshell? Apart from the fact that I was in Captain Coco, uh, <laughs> nothing that's bigger than that. <laughs> uh, that uh, two years ago I went to Steve Vizard's Christmas party. Here we go. <laughs> He's coming. Were you serving the canaps? <laughs> okay, I was parking the cars, but uh, <laughs> actually, me and Darren Hinch were the last two people to leave the party. Did he give you a lap dance? No, <laughs> no but he, he was standing there with two glasses of wine. Where you think some, he's kept one for someone who's gone to the toilet or something, but no one came back. <laughs> And Vince Colosimo threw up on the lounge room floor. Now, uh, hey, too many bombshells. There's too many bombshells. Hey, hey Dave, you're carpet bombing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you got one time to take us out of? There was a bombshell in the news this week. Australia has 21% of the world's pokey machines. Yeah. Yeah. Is that true? It's true. 
And uh, everyone's been so shocked by these statistics. Jeff Kennett appeared in public and announced he was cutting back on blatant uh, gambling advertising in a Crown Casino tie. <laughs> <laughs> no more gambling advertising, said Mr Kennett, putting on a Tats Pokey sandwich board. <laughs> but I love, the, I love the way how he's... He, this week he's saying, you know, we've got to get rid of Medicare because, you know, mm. everyone hates that. <laughs> and, you know, he hates the hospitals and the people who work mm. in them and the people who are sick. Clearly he hates them. Sure. But he's, he's big on gambling. If, no. if Victoria could find a way to combine hospitals and gambling, if they, <laughs> they need to get a life support machine that depends more heavily on the element of chance. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do in Victoria. Well, we're going to have to get out of here because I don't know about you guys, but I've got chill shot. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute after this message. That'll have to do. When my baby smiles at me, the satellite and of my life, and I'm free like water. Welcome back. We're over time. We're going to bail just before we do. Can I thank the faves again? Because uh, yeah. we just... <laughs> Great stuff. There's the album. Right there. Lazy Highways. You want to get into that. That's uh, top shelf gear. You want to give that a run. We've got to fly. We're going to go to a number with Hesse and the boys in just one second. Here's another bombshell. No, don't go to all the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we're done with the theatre of bombshells. <laughs> uh, and just, just a footnote here. I've got the TV guide out and there's a movie on on another network tonight, Taxi Driver, and it's a bit of a bombshell. You know who was originally cast to play the... Uh, well, who was originally going to play the Robert De Niro role in Taxi Driver? Who was that, me? Any ideas? You'd know. Was it, it wasn't uh, Neil Diamond. It was Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond. <laughs> That's what I wanted to see. And taxi driver. <laughs> taxi yeah. driver going, good lord! <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> well, maybe a bit of, are you talking to me? Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, it's one to go out on. Good stuff. Thanks for joining us. We've had a ball here tonight. Uh, thank you one and all. Everyone who's been associated with the show tonight. Guys, can you boot at home? What are you sitting on? I've got something that's sharp the night and it's called Headless Chook. I think that sums the whole feeling. Fantastic. Here they are, largest living things with Headless Chook. Mm -hmm. 